So today's mission is to rescue this piece of maple that fell down Hurricane Fiona a few weeks ago. We've had a few trees down, but this one's in the pond and I don't want it to freeze in. It won't be long and uh, and this will be iced over. So I'm going to go on the other side of that. i got to go up the top of the driveway, across the top of my land where the firewood processor is, and there's a road that I've got made over there that it comes down. So. I'm going to go over there and see if I can't snatch that out without too much drama. I put my forestry winch on and I have a chainsaw with me. And I know there's another tree down there I have to clean up, or a little one anyway. But I can make firewood out of that. So it'll just be, uh, it won't go to waste. I have my, my Goldilocks saw here today. I have my old uh, faithful uh, MS-261, which is uh, Steel's smallest professional saw. I have also have an MS-250, which is a, a homeowner saw, I would say, but I use it for limbing. I use that around the sawmill. I'm pretty happy with uh, it's, um, it's just lighted. It's easy to use. It's got a small, like a 16 inch bar on it. And then I also have a MS-400, which is my bigger saw, my blocking saw for big firewood. And if I have large trees to take down, I take it in the woods with me and it's got a 25 inch bar on it. But anyway, we're using the little fellow today. That's all I need. All right. all the time, as soon as the tractor's running, this drum is turning. This is a Norwood uh, forestry winch. It runs off the power beyond the tractor. All right, you should see what I see now.
once you get it up that far to the tractor, then you can take the rope off, and I can lift it up with the winch and drag it the rest of the way to the tractor, and then limb it in the woods and leave the trash in the woods, and take the pole up to the firewood pile. That's a rocky mess. It's all slick and slimy. It's been raining here for a couple of days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just I move the tractor out. You've seen that. And I'm going to bring the winch, the rope back, haul that tree up out of that uh, rocky, greasy spot, limit right where it sits, and then take the pole out. Makes a little more sense. I thought I could be able to, uh, to haul that over there, but without chains on and as rocky as that is, it's just, uh, just asking for trouble. I'm going to break us up.
I'll leave these uh, limbs in the woods to dry up and then I'll chip them. I've got a little chipper shredder for the back of the truck and turn that into landfill. You know that Norwood winch is, I think it's amazing. I've uh, looked at other winches before I bought this one and for a little bit more money, I could have bought like an entry level PTO powered um, gear driven winch with a big long cable. I think they're 165 feet of cable on them. Sorry about all the vibration. I'm tightening up my tripod, which you're still attached to. Anyway, this will haul, I can haul two logs, two big logs, you know, 18 feet, 20 feet long, 24 feet long, you know, 14, 16, 18 inches behind this little tractor. It doesn't overload it. It has a trailer hitch, two inch receiver down here that I can, that's what I use to haul my forestry trailer. And all loaded together with that, a quart of wood, or almost a quart of wood. And all the trailer itself probably weighs close to 4,000 pounds. Probably a little heavier than the tractor should be pulling, but I never had any issues with it. Has a chainsaw scabbard, a little place there that I can put my, my small chainsaw. It's got um, a little roller fair lead at the rope, sort of an anti-friction device here. But one thing I have noticed is when you pull downhill, like right now you can see that I'm pulling downhill, no problem at all. This rope doesn't, doesn't ball up around this drum ever. It works great. But as soon as I pull, did I say downhill? I mean uphill. If I pull uphill, everything's great. But when I pull downhill, like if I cut a tree up on the side of this bank, let's say I cut that large tree down and want to yard that down the hill, there's not enough tension on the rope once it gets moving or the angle's wrong, but something happens that this um, rope will spool up. So I take three or four wraps around it, put a good tension on it, but I really got to babysit it if it's coming, if the log is coming downhill. If the log is coming uphill, and the rope is over this little roller fair lead, then I don't have any problems ever. That works spectacular. That neat and tidy, I can rub the whole log through, but not right, right till it touches the back of the frame. It also has a little square tube here, which I hang my PV in. Just stand my PV up in there and it works, works great. These are two stabilizers. This one here, they go right to the ground. I pull this pin out and I drop that to the ground and then lower the three-point hitch to the ground so that they dig in so it doesn't try to move the tractor. Um, if you forget to put the park brake on, it kind of doesn't really matter at that point because the, uh, the the winch has its own anchor, which is uh, which is good. Uh, runs all the time, like I said. I run my, hang my rope on that drum. It's never been, never caused any grief, never wound up, not ever, so... Anyway, I'm on a bit of a off-camber angle here, but I'm pretty sure I can get out without too much problem. Not sure if I want to just put the camera down and let you see what I'm up to, or if I just want to drive out and drop that log on top of the hill, so I can cut that up for firewood, for green wood for next year's wood. Maybe I'll put the camera up here. There's a rock right here to my right. And if I put the camera there, you can see what I'm doing. How does that sound? You can see how off-camber I am, too. All right. Sometimes I forget to lift my three-point hitch when I'm done when I'm done winching. Easy enough to do. So just like that, I brought myself a little maple log up. It was a chore that I don't know why I put it off for so long. 
Um, and thanks for being patient with not getting so many videos out. I appreciate what you guys all do, how you support me. There's tons of channels, tons of firewood channels, tons of people way smarter and better looking than I am on the internet, that's for sure. Um, but I'm humbled that you guys have chosen this video, and if you've stuck through this long, you deserve a medal. And uh, feel free to subscribe and like these videos if you like. Some, somehow that works, the algorithm in behind the scenes. Uh, I'm always torn between should I make a video about what I'm doing today, whether it's cutting firewood or milling lumber or um, maintenance on my gear or building a piece of equipment or um, working on my woods road. There's always stuff going on here, the little welding projects coming and going all the time. So I don't know what, what you really want to see. I know what I want to see when I look at a video. Sometimes I put a video in the background and just stream the audio portion of it. So if somebody's teaching me something, if uh, like Ohio Woodburner, for instance, I enjoy what Joe has to say about his business. Um, sometimes Chris in the Woodyard, I like to listen to him as well about what he's, how his business is growing and the mistakes he's mad, made. I'd like to make sure that I'm as transparent as these guys are um, so that you guys can learn from some of the mistakes that I've made over the years as well. And I made tons. I can write a big book about the mistakes I've made. And maybe I should write that book. But, but there's not a lot of uh, income, <laughs> not at this level for me anyway, in the YouTube portion of it. So I'm sort of at the magic crossroads I think a lot of content creators find themselves in. And the income just isn't there yet to justify any equipment um, into the filming or, or trying to hire an editor or anything like that. Um, that would be a backward step for me, for sure. So I think what I'm going to do is just stay at the level I am. I've got a simple old GoPro and my iPhone that I use. I'm talking to my iPhone right now. I know that there's been some issues with sound quality, and I think I've cleared that up. I did buy a microphone, just a, not an expensive one, just a cheap one on Amazon, but it works. It seems to do what I want it to do. Um, and I'll still pump out videos, and I'll try to come up with some kind of a magic, I don't know if magic's the right word, some kind of a, a line in the sand that, you know, at 5,000 subscribers or something like that, I will... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I want to see that, that it's going to be worth doing. And I want to see what's happening um, with my own business. I don't want to take two extra hours a day because that's that's another cord of wood made, processed, and delivered. Because I can make a whole lot more in that time every day than that would probably make in a whole month in making a YouTube video every, every say, three or four days. Um, anyway, I've rambled on enough about this. If anybody that's in this YouTube industry has wisdom for me, you can uh, message me and, and I'll reach back out to you as well. I know there's lots of guys that are just like me, under 5,000 subscribers, um, and wondering what the next level would be. Um, this, this part of my business isn't growing leaps and bounds. I can make my firewood business grow leaps and bounds, but I'm kind of stuck right now with the equipment that I have. I have one truck, one trader, one processor, no employees. My wife helps me from time to time. And I mill lumber, make and sell over 200 full cords, not toy face cords that some guys sell, but full cords of, of firewood a year. And we do a couple of hundred bundles now of firewood a month. So we are busy. We don't stop. Plus, I maintain all my own gear myself and I'm a long haul trucker. So that's a part time business, which uh, I go it's regular run from here to Indiana once a month or so. So which is about a 5,000 kilometer return trip. So anyway, I don't need to say any more about that. I'm going to wrap this video up here. So I appreciate you sticking through. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Over and out, everybody. I appreciate every single one of you.